hobbits, dwarves, elves, orcs, and man. Welcome to Cinema Go. This is the 20th anniversary special of The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. What about the legs? What about the legs? I don't need those. The Fellowship is back, everyone, here to follow up the 20th anniversary special of Fellowship of the Ring. Thanks for checking out this video, and if you haven't seen last year's of this exact panel of Fellowship of the Ring, please check that out as well. How's everybody doing? It's so good to see the Fellowship back. It's one year ago that we did our first Lord of the Rings 20th anniversary show. John. Doing great, doing great. You know, busy time of year around the holidays, but it's always fun to get together with the friends and, and talk about one of the greatest movies of all time. Agreed. One of the best trilogies of all time, for sure. Yes. Brian, how are you, sir? Good. I wish the uh, TV show was as good as these movies. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> yeah, we, just... We're got, we are not going to talk about the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Onion Rings. I wouldn't, I wouldn't fuck that show with uh, Felix the Cat's Dick. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Captain Infinity, Felix the Cat. Good to see you. How are you doing? representing i cannot believe it's been a year but then again a cat wizard is never late but will always appear when one means to <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go around like we did last year talk about our first initial reactions of seeing we're gonna talk extended edition on this one everyone a uh, lot more than we did in the first one um but first initial reactions coming out of the theater was only the theatrical cut so I want to start with Brian, uh, like last year, the first time you saw the two towers coming out of the theater, just, what do you remember about it? I remember the very beginning of the movie. Uh, I, you know, everybody was d depressed about Gandalf and the very beginning we're at the big Newport, huge movie theater, you know, beach balls everywhere back in the old day when people used to celebrate, you know, going to the movies, throwing toilet paper and everything. And <laughs> Tortillas. Tortillas. when life was fun. <laughs> yeah. When life was fun. And uh, and we we uh, when when Gandalf in the very beginning of that uh, that scene when Gandalf goes down and, and uh, you know you find out he's alive and battles the Balrog and and uh, everybody just cheered in the in the movie theater and pretty much that was the way that I felt the entire movie you know leaving it was like God and the the only problem I had with it though was at the end where you you just want more because it just ends so mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And it it ended terribly. It I, ended I just to... like the first one with Sam and Frodo walking yeah. somewhere and you're like, ah, I need Oh, more. there's Mount Doom. Okay. What the fuck is going on? It's really one of those movies, very different on the first viewing. I think it's uh, one of the most immersive movie experiences ever. It was at the cinema. It was with my, uh, at the time, girlfriend, now ex-wife, ah, the circle of life. Um, <laughs> and we may or may not have had a strange uh, biscuit. I don't know. But uh, it was definitely a very uh, sort of dreamlike fantasy experience. And indeed, the whole thing felt like a dream before the movie started. And, of course, it starts off with uh, uh, Frodo going, ah, it was just a dream. I was like, oh, wow. So, yeah, definitely... One of the best cinema experiences. Now a bit more critical in hindsight, especially with a couple of retcons that we're going to get to. Right. I'm pretty sure I was with Brian. I mean, we made sure to see all of these big event movies, and this that's exactly what it was. Of the day, there was no bigger event than getting a chance to see the sequel to Fellowship of the Ring. Um, so, yeah, we were all, you know... On cloud nine, super high to see this movie. Super <laughs> high because we were just fucked up and super high. Um... <laughs> But obviously it was just, it was a blast. It was a great time. It lived up to everything, all the expectations that we had for it. Um, and we kind of knew that like with the first one, Peter Jackson just did such a good job and the way that these films were set up because, you know, at least Ben and I were definitely people of the time who paid attention to, to cinema, even way back then. We, you know, read trades and stuff and kind of knew what was going on with the production of this movie. I just knew that because they were making them all as one big movie, w what we got from that first one was going to translate right into this one. And of course it did. And, and it was just epic and awesome. It may, I don't know if it's the reason it's my favorite. I think just cinematically, this is my favorite one, but it's the last movie I saw in the theater with my mom. 
Um, it was in uh, 2002 of December. She only lasted a couple more months after that. And we used to go see cinema all the time together. She was always supportive. The fact that I liked watching weird independent films. I know that's kind of a downer, but it is the final movie I ever saw with my mom in the theater. So it whole I have to say that even though this is a fun show, you know, it's that's kind of the way I remember it more than anything else. But we actually just finished it again this evening. So we spent the four hours before we are talking about it watching it again and i could watch it again and again and again actually all of them yeah the special edition it's four hours isn't it just for yeah, part two it's three four hours and 58 hours. minutes like but it, how it long? doesn't feel longer than the other one it doesn't feel longer no and how there's so many parts the entire, the entire trilogy as a special edition how long is that 12 hours <laughs> <laughs> there is a fuck ton of stuff yeah. in yes. this one. tons and it's tons. all awesome that's yeah. some of the best stuff. I can't believe it got cut. It is, for me, the empire of the trilogy. It is Sauron Strikes Back. So yep. it definitely works best if you see them all together. I wouldn't want to wait three years to see the next installment, basically. Return of the King, Return of the Jedi. So, yeah, it works very much as a good, satisfying middle chapter. Yeah, as far as the comparisons go, it's got, a, it's got the... Uh, the fight against the Empire on the Hoth, there is a big battle near the end, so that makes it a more satisfying Empire Strikes Back. But, uh, yeah, good overall. Again, I'm going to re reference it before I talk about it later. There's a bit of a switcheroo, a bit of a retcon, a bit of a subversion of expectations. Oh, you thought Gandalf was dead? Oh, no! <laughs> I think you'll find he's quite alive, he's Gandalf the White. Oh, we tricked you. Oh, all that slow motion crying. That's right, I'm not letting that go. <laughs> but, but we'll be talking about that in more detail later. But overall, a good, uh, what we call a good cinematic emotional journey. And this extended cut, it helps with, uh, you know, explaining a little bit more about Boromir's brother. Boromir himself, like, because he was a weird, awkward guy in the first movie. And then, yeah. Yeah, yeah in my notes, I refer to Faramir as the no. hippie. Uh, well, it's it's my second favorite. I, I think I said in our uh, fellowship video that that one's my favorite always has been in this film when you split everybody up you kind of have these different storylines not all of them are as, as interesting to me as as the next one there's not really a scene that i don't like in the movie like even with the extended version everything is great um but some of the original cast doesn't have as interesting of stuff to do in this film and they were the ones I fell in love with in the first film. They were the ones I was ready to continue the journey. And obviously you still are. You're completely continuing the journey with all these characters. But the new characters in, in Two Towers are the ones I find the most interesting yes. for this this film. So it's really cool that all these new new characters don't fall flat. Like a lot of the Star Wars movies and stuff, the new Star Wars or whatever, they try to introduce new characters along the way and none of them were very very interesting um so it's great that they just the world just got bigger and and better in this second film i i'm not a huge fan of Ooh. gandalf the white compared to racist to gandalf the gray because i know <laughs> cap you said in the last one you know that it was this fake emotional moment when we lost gandalf the gray but exactly when i see but gandalf the white i think of him as a different person i think he even kind of alludes to that in his yeah. introduction that he is he's not more like Gandalf the Grey. Yeah, he's, he's like Gandalf the White. He doesn't even remember Gandalf. Rem Gandalf yeah, the he Grey doesn't remember the his version. name. And so I get being emotional and sad when we lose him because he's the cool yeah. one. This is my favorite, but I think it's the shots. I think it's the epicness. Not just I'm not just talking about the battles, just like that shot where you see uh, um, shadow facts come along. Like, yeah. to me, this is like the best directed movie. Of, of, like, <laughs> oh my God, that's shadow facts' his head, you asshole. I just think it's the best directed movie of the three from Peter Jackson. This is the one, and by the way, this is the one that expands the world building of Middle Earth to show the kingdoms, Rohan, Gondor. It's so big. You only hear about that stuff in the first one, really. Uh, you know, um, I talked about the small scale battle ending of the first one and boy oh boy did that fucking change in this one with Helm's mm -hmm. Deep which is my favorite giant segment of everything uh fully epic and off the white returns to you now at the turn of the tide <laughs> well you've got to insert footage of Mr. Natural that is Gandalf the White keep on wizarding 
but, but yeah, and that scene with Shadowfax riding it is freaking amazing. It's actually one of my favorites to the. It's nothing but a horse riding across the landscape and the beautiful Howard Shore it's, music. It's beautiful. It's, like it's like yeah. transcendent. It's 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 and it's, a, it's and, and there's so many shots like that in this movie. Just the 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 people from uh, the people from Rohan coming down the hill at the oh end. yeah oh my god this. This movie just fucking explodes my brain with beautiful like art and it does raise those stakes, but only in the level where it doesn't go off the rails. Like three has to up that even further, which feels repetitive. Yeah. And that's why I don't like three as much as these other ones. This one's that perfect balance. And and if you haven't read the books, if someone hasn't read the books, this one can be a lot to take in because it introduces a lot of like after characters, like people that you didn't know about. And if you, if you don't immediately pay attention to these new characters and story threads, then you can get a little lost, you know, because you're immediately introduced to like Worm Tongue or whatever. Worm Tongue. Mm. Yeah, like you're you're introduced to this new kingdom and there's all this like turmoil going on, but you don't know what's happening. You're thrusted into it. But as soon as you pay a little bit of attention and Carl Urban is a fucking beast in this movie, by the way, he's so good. And he's such a good looking dude, you know, so <laughs> just saying. <laughs> um, I agree. But, but as soon as you get invested and you pay attention, you're immediately in love. Like John said, you immediately like these new characters and you can't wait to see almost in like an Avenger style. How are they going to meet up with the characters from the first movie? And when they do, it's fantastic. It, it give it gave you that chill factor. You know, when you see some of those elves from from uh, yeah. uh, uh, the yeah. first movie come back in and let's talk about some of the big added stuff from the extended cut like some of the big stuff and we'll start with cap like what's some of your favorite stuff that my god they let they finally put back in that why did they take out well once they put it back in i started watching that exclusively so i can't remember what the old one was like that's what she said <laughs> was it when oh. they were talking to sarah man and they had the uh, the guy places allegiance is that new or relatively yeah. new that's no that that's, added, new. Right? that's new that's new yeah okay there you go, that's one. See, now it's in, it seems seamless. It's got to be in there. It makes complete sense. But Lady Galadriel... Uh, I think you say Lady they, Gaga. They cut out that... They, they cut out, <laughs> Lady Gaga <laughs> got in this, is she? With Lady Galadriel, they cut out that entire thing of her giving uh, the Fellowship those gifts. They cut that whole thing out of Fellowship. Gone. It wasn't even in the movie. So for the next two movies, they had to remember to cut the scenes out where those little items, those gifts that she gave oh, them didn't yeah. exist, right? Yeah. So my favorite thing about this one is the movie starts out with Frodo and Sam like rappelling on a rope, and that's the elven rope that she gave. Right. Them. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this elven rope is super strong. The, and in the theatrical cut, you see Gollum, when they capture Gollum, he's like screaming, it burns. It burns. That's in the theatrical Mingle. cut. Burn. But they don't tell you why it burns. It's oh, just yeah. him yelling it burns, but in the in the elven. extended cut, they show you that it's the elven rope and it's making it burn. Oh. Those are good. I love those added details of all the Galadriel stuff that she gave them that you didn't see. And they they had the editor had to go through and chop every one of those because they chopped out that whole scene. So oh. I love that that's a good one. For me, that's a huge one. It's yeah, I mean the Boromir, Faramir stuff, it it seems important, but is it as important as Perry and Pippin or whatever? Finding the weed at the end of the movie. <laughs> I want to get high, so high. Well, and the one of my main things that I noticed was uh, Aragorn. Uh, them talking about uh, the ring that he was wearing. And that's how they figured out that he was supposed to be the true true king. Well, of... how, about, how about Aragorn as a Numenorian? That's what he was, right? Yeah, yeah. That's right. So he's you never know that in the theatrical cuts that he's no. like 90 years old. 87. Yeah, 87 80, yeah, yeah, you never know that. That's a huge, yeah. wonderful detail to include. That Yeah, because Numenorians are stronger, faster, they live longer, yeah. and they never they never tell They're you. They're like Nexus six. <laughs> but Ben, you were you were bringing up the Boromir stuff, which truly is kind of the biggest storyline that gets added to this one. I think so. Um, and it's there's... it's my some of my favorite scenes, whether, you know, I guess extended version is the only one where you get it. So um, like, like Cap said, it's kind of the only one I really remember at this point, because that stuff is crucial to my viewing experience of the two towers. Um, it's a huge part of the enjoyment. I love that they kind of recontextualize what we know about Boromir, because I still found him a sympathetic character in the first film, even though He's a little bit played to be a villain, but it's, you know, it's all the ring 
um, that is it's controlling him. And it, yeah. so so I I've always really loved Boromir as a character, but you just you, you you see him in a new light. You see what he was up against with his father, um, and and the love he had for his brother, the re- relationship they had, and then when they flesh out a few more scenes that flesh out Faramir as well. Um, again. I don't really remember the differences between, you know, what Faramir was like without the extended version of him. I think I still kind of liked him, but I think he, you learn so much more about him this time around that he he, he he's the one same of my he, favorite characters of the he, new edition. He's the same as he is in the third one. He wants his dad's love. Daddy wasn't there to take me to the fair. He wants his yeah. approval. He's, he's, he's telling you, like, I'm just as good as... Baromir, I'm just not as fierce. Like, there's something about him that's different. Baromir's such an advocate for his brother. Yeah. Like, he's like, oh, he's the one that did it. Like, that's what that's that good stuff you needed to see. Like, Baromir's a good guy, you know? Like, but anyway, yeah, sorry, yeah, exactly. that's I, I, I love that Sean Bean still gets a chance to be dead in the movie because he shows up <laughs> dead in every movie that he, he gets killed <laughs> in every movie. Uh, even though he died in the pre- previous movie, they still show him dead <laughs> his dead body in this one so yeah a lot more of uh saruman prepping for the 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 war the the yeah. wild people and and telling them to attack the villages in rohan and yes people yeah. of rohan took your land that you're scrabbling for yeah. cheeseburgers in the forest <laughs> <laughs> and and build the dam and burn the forest to farragon all that stuff's new so and, and there's a whole bunch of new scenes from um from uh, Smeagol. Who already kind of, you know, was just the scene stealer of this movie. He, you just want to see more of Gollum every time he's not on screen. You're just like, I just want to go back to Gollum because it was such an amazing render, first of all, like visually. Just such a fucking detailed render uh, that brought it to life where you never... You It tricked your brain. It tricked your brain that it was... High like, resolution for my precious <laughs> best polygon <laughs> rendering. Yeah. I'm no one st- was a leap forward in technology for that point yeah. in time. Um, oh, yeah. They, oh, you know, yeah. they had done some Jar Jar and whatnot. There was some versions of motion capture using that style of technology, but whatever Weta did with Gollum, the time they put in with Gollum, the performance they got from Andy Circus to build off of, it just it created an indelible character that you know put really did push technology forward at that point the the leap you did not know you were going to get that when you saw the original fellowship they kind of hid gollum and so you didn't know when when he shows up in the early scenes of of two towers and he's fully realized and he fully looks like he's immersed in the scene with the actors it's it's pretty mind blowing for the day. I mean, we see a lot of it nowadays, and some's impressive, some's not. It, typically, if Andy Circus is the one that's in the motion capture, uh, whether it's Planet of the Apes or whatnot, it looks freaking amazing. But uh, I still think Gollum is one of the best looking things, even after twenty years. It yeah. looks perfect, and it has so much to do with the color grading and the lighting, not just the CGI itself. And his eyes. How you? It's Ooh. how you can. It's how you can blend it with the colors that you see on screen, so it doesn't stand yeah. out so much you know and and it did such a good job of that and luckily those it, blues and those grays were awesome dude exactly right cap it's because the, it, if if they had put him in the shire it might have stood out a little bit differently you know the stuff they use in new zealand stuff's like landscape shots and beautiful stuff like that you know obviously there's lots of fake stuff and nice sets again this movie has practical sets you know a lot of them where three starts to detract from that and then obviously the hobbit movies have like zero <laughs> the hobbit yeah, movies are like was crying because all the green screen <laughs> rohan it's all it's all real oh, you could argue that gandalf the white is indeed a different person gandalf the gray is that what they used to call me but let's say it's uh, emotionally in hindsight but of an emotional fake out with the slow motion and the blubbing and the music as discussed last time <laughs> but it's quite clever and you could argue well no one ever saw gandalf die on screen did you and if you think about it from a writing perspective it's a quadruple fake out because in the fellowship of the ring you see or you infer that gandalf died and then in the start of this movie the two towers saw on strikes back you get to see Gandalf 
uh, fighting with the Balrogs. You're like, oh, he's not dead. What a twisteroo. But then Frodo wakes up. It was just a dream. It's a double, triple twisteroo. But then, no, later it was and wasn't a dream. That was Gandalf fighting the Balrog. It's a quadruple twisteroo. That's screenwriting, folks. So, Cap, you're saying that, because I know you were pretty harsh on that in the original film, uh, or when we t- talked about this last year. But the way they it. milked it for the for the blubbing, yeah. But you're saying that the filmmaker redeems themselves, and it, it is earned, all the blubbing, or it still is not, even though there's all this... Yeah, well, it's it's dishonest emotionally, because every time, every rewatch onward, from the second time you watch the end of The Fellowship of the Ring, every time... You see them crying and hugging yeah, and yeah. slow motioning and blubbing. Like, <laughs> he's coming back in a couple of minutes. Relax, like, you fuckers. <laughs> and, and, and but, but technically, but and, technically it is clever because it takes you back and forth. So it's quite the emotional ping pong. So it's actually very clever screenwriting. And Two Towers is your favorite of the trilogy, right? Yeah, definitely The Empire Strikes Back of the trilogy. Because Two Towers Sauron doesn't have... Back. Two Towers doesn't have the exact same prostitution of emotions, does it? Aragorn goes over the cliff and dies for 15 well, minutes oh, of screen time. Oh, okay. He's dead okay. for 15 minutes, and everyone cries and goes back to the... Yeah, but that was... But that, no, oh. I don't think people really cried that much. It was kind no, of... You knew he wasn't it's, dead. It's, it's way oh, more... It's the amount of He crying. has a point, but... The same thing happens in this movie, and Howard. I'm actually irked by it because it's seriously like 15 minutes. Give us some time to feel his loss. The Gandalf death scene is like literally a sound, like it, it's literally a track on the score, like Gandalf's <laughs> death. <laughs> yeah, like, like Aragon's death was like nobody bought that for a second. No, <laughs> but I get I what you're saying, John. I get what you're saying. Though, that they make we'll the same family. attempt of uh, prostitution <laughs> of emotion in this. Hey, did movie. our main character just fall over a cliff and we didn't see it, so he's dead? <laughs> and I saw the clear like when Indiana through. Jones does it in the Last Crusade. It's like, oh, there goes yeah. Indy. Oh, what are you all looking at? <laughs> oh, we played it for a laugh. Yeah, like he's Indy. dead. That's so funny. That's a great comparison. Yeah, where they're all looking. Over. That would have been great if they're all looking over the edge and then Aragon just walks over the side. What are we looking at? The time (laughs) frame of the fake out, anything more than three minutes of screen time, it was. Indiana Jones style. But I know what John's saying, though, and I totally get that, because it did last a little bit. So is there there other stuff, uh, other retcons that Cap was taking issue with? No, I mean, unless you want to get really specific, it does start off with a bit of a fake out on the mountain. They're climbing the mountain, they're going down, no, they're not climbing, they're going down the mountain, then... Oh, I found the bottom. <laughs> so that's a cute little fake out right at the beginning. And again, that's only in the extended cut. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The theatrical cut, Sam and Frodo are just walking and then they talk about, oh, we're, out, we're running out of lameness bread. We're running out of bread. <laughs> oh, I like this bread. Oh, Sam, you got such a good perspective on life, Sam. <laughs> I don't know why we're all talking Irish half the time. And more <laughs> land was right. It's, it's interesting how the fellowship in this one have been separated. So you're cutting in between basically three different groups and then the villains. I think that's a really interesting way to start the film because that's like a objective observer storytelling. Because, uh, yeah, you're basically starting with, with three groups of uh, protagonists. So yeah. to ups the ante on the action straight away. But to me, like the tree ants, like a lot of that stuff was kind of draggy. And obviously it was supposed to be that way because that's how tree bears. That's, that's how they talk. But that's <laughs> the fine line. They got a bit. It did drag it down a bit. No, no, but it, I mean, and it was supposed like we have agreed that you are not orcs, and you're like, well, it, <laughs> it's you daytime. Can, it's daytime, up. and then all of a sudden there it's nighttime, and they just figured out that it is. They just were saying good morning. Yeah, we just got done <laughs> saying, saying good, good morning. morning. But but the funny thing is, is when they're when when they're like in hardcore battle mode. They take down Isengard in like five fucking yeah. seconds. You did <laughs> notice that, that? Yeah, that little tree ran quickly when his fucking head's on fire. 
Oh, I love that. And he just, yeah. Oh, he just, yeah. And he puts himself right out. <laughs> I'm yeah. pretty sure that was yeah, in you the move, original you move one, too. I always love yeah. it. Well. Yeah, no, the, no, that is in the original. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. whole Isengard battle is in the original. But it also well, begs the question that, that people have problems with, like, the Eagles in the third one. It's like, dude, these Ents can just fuck shit up, like, so fast. Like They've been angry they... <laughs> for a very long time. I know, but it's like, why are they not just, like, just, hey. And they can't find their wives. Can you no, come? I know. Where, Where the fuck are the wives? Them. Hey, Treants, <laughs> can you just come Have to Helm's Deep and just stand <laughs> and in And they don't remember Helm's what they look like. <laughs> I, maybe I heard this before, but I didn't realize until this one that uh, John Reese Davies, the guy who plays Gimli, yeah. does the voice for Treebeard. Oh. Yeah, no yeah, I heard that. I heard that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I did not. I did. I, I saw that in the credits this time. I obviously, with that. different pitch, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah he does sound. I, I never noticed it, so he obviously sounds pretty different. But I didn't know, cool. and yet somehow I've always known. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the age of of you know magic and stuff. The age of magical trees yeah. will die out, and only. But then it. But then it probably only boring die. trees will remain. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> non talking trees. And I hate <laughs> Maybe you want the occasional burning bush. That's what you call. Excuse me. Come on. Are you the singing bush? I just rewatched our video from last year and how much I talked about Mary and Pippin. Just they could have been throwaway like characters, but they were so much more than just comic relief. They're just spinning their wheels in this one. And uh, except for the end, I do love the end where yeah. they but find the right. barrels and the weed. Notes, and... Just... Even in my notes, I refer to them as the other two. Yeah, so they're, they're just, they are a bit. Yeah, yeah, they're kind of just every time it goes back to them, it's more expository dialogue than anything else, and that's fine. But except for don't... his, there, there's the one scene where he, he says that the the Shire won't even exist anymore. That yeah, was no, and good. I love that's the best scene where he's like, you know, we need to do this, and he's like, well, why don't we just go back to the Shire? And he's like, because there won't be a Shire. No, that's great, John. That looks delicious behind you, by the way. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> mash. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Boil them, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Boil them, mash them, boil them, boil them. Potato, potato. Last year I shit on Gimli. <laughs> they like deserve Mitchell. shitting on. I know. Why are you I, shitting on I do not enjoy Gimli? them in this movie. I what? think no, 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 the no, between my, my, Gimli I'm just saying and him, him and, um, uh, God damn. Legolas. Legolas. Him and, him and Legolas have just, Gimli. this is the movie. It way. is the best. They finally like it. Just, it's great growth of like when you see Gimli jump in front of that sword and just pull yeah. that arrow out. Like uh, when they meet up with the the guys from Rohan, it's yeah. like, like okay, now these guys are all in with each other. You know, my favorite is when they're counting. Uh, no. I hate, I hate that. that. I, hate I love it. I hate it. <laughs> it. it. Every drink. And then in the third one, it just good. It gets so bad. Like oh. And I'm sure they would have killed more than that, right? I like, know. 40, I they killed said 17. 47. I'm like, really? I thought you no, killed that was like much 500. More. I think Legolas and Gimli become my least favorite characters in, in the Two Towers. Oh, really? okay. 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 But it, a lot of that has to do with how much the other characters get to shine. But yeah. they do nothing but but have that back and forth comedic banter. And they were not, not as much Gimli. He was kind of a comedic... Uh, he, for comedic effect in the first film as well. But Legolas was so cool in the first film. He was always using his skills. And it's he still cool. does in this one, but it, it doesn't shine the way it did in the first film. No, but he, he does have that back and forth with uh, Strider a lot. Uh, yeah. You know, or, or, I'm sorry, uh, Aragon, where they're, you know, they're, they're, you can tell they're close because he's kind of that bond with the elves that he has, the elven uh, elves. Mm -hmm. or, or, I'm sorry, the, the woodland elves, sorry. And, like, they do have, like, a little kind of fight you know verbal fight at one point and then you know, I, I yeah, well, know then, then when they have a little me, arc i still like them you know i still like i said i like all the original characters but the fact that they don't shine as much as they did in the first film is a letdown a little bit for me but the ones that do shine the new characters that that get a chance like like brad dorif as as worm uh, worm so tail, fucking worm tongue, good. Which, what is it? Yeah. Worm tongue. Worm tongue. Yeah. My yeah. God. Worm, worm, worm tail is Harry Potter. Worm tongue. <laughs> there you go. His creep factor in those yeah. oh, 100%. Those scenes, whether he's with Aowan or whatever her name is. When he's or, looking oh, at Aowan, and he touches oh, her. Oh, so creepy. Yeah, uh, just like his skin tone. He seriously looks like a lizard or something. He's just like, 
he's pale and pasty, but also kind of sweaty and gross. Yeah. Okay, I have yeah. a question uh, though. Yeah. Like, I'm wondering, like, if there was a prequel, like he was a normal person, because at at first she's like yeah, doesn't mind question. his yeah. touch. Well, he clearly well, I think, was. I, I feel like he was sent by Sauron. Really? He wasn't somebody that grew up in from the get go. I, I I I feel like he's an outsider who came in Sarah, and man, helped so... kind of take control of the place. But at Let's... first, when he touches her, she doesn't seem to mind it, and that maybe she liked him at one point. I don't know. Saying, especially when he started moment. doing crack and bath salts. That's <laughs> he does look like he's on bath salts. He's a big fan. <laughs> he was only eighteen years old. But do you old. know what I'm saying? Like at first, like when he's touching her face, she's like, yeah. like almost remembering I, something. I, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, she yeah. was afraid. I think th that's what I took. No, I, I think she was afraid she was, too. But she was intimidated that, like, by uh, him, and the fact that he was as close to uh, the king as he was made yeah. it seem like he had been there for a while. Yeah. You know, like right. You know, Legolas was super badass in in uh, or the uh, what are the big wolves called in this thing? Oh god, the that's so oh, good. Rogs or rogs? Wall rogs, wall rogs. Where those he things. fucking jumps on the back of one of those motherfuckers. Ooh. Yeah, and then he, he and he's sitting there shooting, and then the horse goes and he does this the slow like, motion. Front, yeah, front All right. flip onto the no, horse I don't ass. agree. I think that's the stupidest. What? <laughs> like it, it is so fake looking. It's yeah. ridiculous. Button. I agree. That maneuver is stupid. Oh. Well, it's not as bad as when he jumps on the elephant in the next. No, one. exactly. <laughs> That's the, the same exact thing. It's so but, but like, let me ask ridiculous. You, uh... Guys, do you think that's dumber than when he skateboards down the stair? Down no, that's the dumbest. That's all debatable. That's that's part of why I don't dig Legolas in this movie. <laughs> They're trying to figure out what was cool in 2000. I'm trying. I'm trying. To, I think Triple X came out better. in 2002 as well. What was this fucking Vin Diesel? Yeah, what about? Uh, I liked when when Gimli gets tossed onto the yes. bridge. That was oh, again. I, toss toss me. Dwarf. I have what? to bring. I toss have to bring me. that up because if you guys watched don't last year. If you guys watched last year, I said every one of these three movies, there's a dwarf tossing joke. <laughs> and it, uh, I want to talk about like audience and like awards for this movie, because let me let me just say this movie got passed over for best picture by Chicago, which uh, is fine. I don't think anyone ever watched Chicago again after the first time they saw it. I've watched it multiple times. OK, Chicago. fine. I That's love fine. it. OK, I OK. It. Okay, okay, fair enough. Um, Peter Jack was Peter Jackson was not nominated for best director for this. Um, it also lost Are you out. Sure? To, yes, I'm sure. It also lost out to um, Chicago for art direction, which blows my mind. Yeah. And but the biggest, the, I don't they agree they about that. Yeah. The, see, the no, I know they were saving it for the third one. At it, but what if they, the third one was a complete dud? They <laughs> should have given most of the awards to the first film. They, I forget what the first film got. I think it got some, maybe. It got director, Best Picture, you know. Best Director nomination. But then when it came to the second one, they kind of held back and were like, you know what? We're going to give it the all. Best the best one of the bunch, film. they hold back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. 100%, yeah. the the music is the best. Oh, yeah. But the big, but the biggest thing to me was uh, um, Sean Astin should have been nominated for Best Supporting Actor in this movie. In the third yeah. film. In, right? in two and three. Along with Andy See, Serkis. I, I gave sorry. Andy Circus. Yeah, and, I gave Andy, Andy Circus, Circus yeah. as a digital performance. I didn't care. I didn't need to be told by by somebody that man, we should start to recognize digital performances or diverse performances. I didn't need anything <laughs> to tell me that. It, it was a performance by Andy Circus, which was fucking amazing, and it deserved a nomination. I thought Sam really stands out in the third film the most. No, he's he's probably the best in the third, but I also like him in this one and Andy Circus as well. But neither one of them are nominated. I, I find really agree. Your, your concept of awards puerile and uh, irrelevant. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I, I find them irrelevant. <laughs> I, I actually fucking, I don't even watch, it's funny me and John are talking about this, but we've kind of stopped watching award shows altogether. I it's haven't. More, we're talking more like the past award shows where like people fucking cared, you know? No, like, I stopped I did. watching a long time ago. <laughs> Ever since Blade Runner didn't get the Northern 82, I stopped watching. <laughs> <laughs> I know Brian um, would love to talk about this, I'm sure. The Swords? Helm's Deep. The finale, the giant battle that this was leading up to, which 
in cinema at that point now we've had a lot of these cgi fucking battles of you know it's the best it's the best it's best set piece of all three of these movies yeah it really is and uh, there wasn't i mean we had some films previous to that like a braveheart or whatever that showed us some pretty epic battles that were pretty awesome um but this was in a fantasy world and and showing us things that you don't get in those other films and so it was just like it was amazing. We them, had them really experienced something on that scale. It was a night before. battle. So so the CGI of how many numbers of people and orcs were out there. And raining. Did, did, it didn't look compromised the way it did in the third one. Where and it was well lit looking at you, Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's the most complex and intense battle scene, epic battle scene. Total characters, underdogs. Characters working together and doing things. Yeah, it's, it was so. And then and it, you had the surprise helpers show up. All the elves show up right before the, you know, right yeah. before the battle is going to start. The elven wood, uh, yeah, or the woodland elves, yeah, yeah. They would have been elven wood. Done. Elven yeah. wood. <laughs> the elven Amy wood. wants her some That's elven wood. Said. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> we uh, we love ourselves some some uh, two towers big battle. Oh, God. Helm's deep. I mean, it's yeah. Helm's deep is just. It doesn't get any better than that as far as like building a gigant. You don't even want to call it a miniature because it was like 10 feet high, but they built Helm's Deep. Like they clayed. A gigantic all miniature. And all the, all the, uh, like they start off with all the small ladders. We James got a hobbit just car. joined us. Hey, bud. We Hi, have, baby. James, we have a cat. We have a we cat. We got a hobbit here. Look at the cat. Mm. <laughs> hey, dude. Legolas, like, like you know, he, him being told to shoot shoot the arrows at the guy, hits him twice in the chest, and he goes still in with the firework yeah, and yeah, blows that, up. The that kills him. He can't. It kills him because he can't. He can't uh, stop that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Boom! And then they all blow. Like they're all knocked out, right? They're all knocked out, mm -hmm. and then they all start filing in, and shh, there's a battle down on the bottom, and they're they're trying to get all get into the main part of the to uh, Helm's Deep with the, the big, big uh, log. And, and they're also trying to, you know, sh shoot that. And, and they're like, we're, we're basically fucked now. We have no buddy left to, to fight. Like Maybe there's both. so many times where he looks into, he doesn't look at the camera, but the camera looks at him and he just has this sense of like, fuck. And you know he's the guy that played the captain of the Titanic and Titanic. Um, I and, didn't realize and, that. Yeah, that's pretty really funny because he's got there, the same expression. He as has the, the Titanic. same expression. <laughs> like, we're going <laughs> during the Helm's Deep battle. We're going down. Like, he has the expression oh, like, what I don't know I what do? the fuck to do. Is this it? <laughs> no, Theoden's uh, son's funeral. That was oh, new. That's, oh, and yeah, the yeah, scene it, is so amazing. Yeah, and it's and in the scene and shit. Yeah. That was that was quite uh, I don't know it was pretty pretty powerful. To be honest with you, you don't get a lot of Theoden like character development in the theatrical cut. You really learn about him once you watch the four hour movie. You know, like there's so much more about him, and same with the third one as well. You know, like he's kind of an afterthought in the second movie. You know, just kind of like a pussy king, and that's not yeah. who he is. that's not who he is. You know, but. I'm gonna end Helm's Deep with this. It's the most epic battle scene I've ever seen put the celluloid, and I'm not joking. I know I've seen Spartacus, I've seen Ben Hur, I've seen Braveheart. I think I, I think the Battle of Helm's Deep is the best, most exciting battle scene I've ever seen put to film. And it's also fitting that there's a lot of Wilhelm screams in that, considering it's called Helm's Deep. <laughs> Yeah, one of my favorite parts of that battle when the the ladders start coming up. With oh, like it's so yeah. that land over. So fucking. Cool. And then you got one of those crazy ass berserkers that ride the ladder up. Yeah. He immediately jumps off and just swings and takes yeah. out like four people with his giant ass blade. Yeah. That, that's just a freaking awesome moment. And you see the elves just flying off. <laughs> <laughs> Again, my I brought this up in our, our fellowship one. My initial reaction to Lord of the Rings is the trailer. It meant a lot. It had me super excited. Oh, yeah, it informed yeah. me a lot about what we were going to get to see. Um, two things I have to say about the Two Towers trailer. Uh, and, and Cap, I don't know. I'm interested in your take on this. The Two Towers trailers, unlike a lot of movies nowadays are worried about, spoils that Gandalf returns. 
in in I think two versions of the trailer, they both let you in on the fact that Gandalf is coming back. It's the opening Ooh. of the trailer. <laughs> yeah. So I don't I don't know what your thoughts are on that, uh, Cap. The fact that it, you were actually told as an audience that he's coming back from the trailer. Like the original version, even more. I try and ignore trailers these days. You can have trailers with spoilers. Or you can have trailers that have stuff that isn't even in the movie. Yeah. So you can't can. trust trailers. So I just generally try and ignore them and go straight to a YouTube review and or just watch the thing and get it over with. Yeah, you can't trust trailers. Too much information or lies. Uh, I give this movie an 11. It was my favorite movie of the year it came out. Uh, came out in 2002, but it was ob obviously Oscar worthy in 2003. I love this fucking movie so much. Um, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. I give it a 10 only because I like the first one even more than this one. And it, this is my favorite trilogy of any trilogy that exists. So I love it. Absolutely. Best, best trilogy ever. And this, this movie's great. Jamie. I agree. 10. It's beautiful. It's uh, wonderful to watch, and it's humorous. Hey, I'm going to give it two <laughs> out of two towers. Both the towers. <laughs> nice. There you go. I can always yeah. nitpick a few things like the retconning, but overall, a good, satisfying journey, emotional and literal, um, and uh, sets you up nicely, tees you up for the third one. So a good, definitely uh, the burger in the bun. Uh, because I, much like Brian said, because I like Fellowship so much more, it's it's kind of that pinnacle for the series. I got to give it just one step down, so I would give it a 10. But I like what Cap said, uh, because of the two towers, it really deserves an 11. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, take that however you want. It, it, it's right in between. It's a 10, 11. It doesn't matter. It's pretty much a perfect movie. The trilogy is pretty much a perfect trilogy. One of the best ever, if not the best um, and so, yeah, I'm excited for us to get a chance to watch the third one and talk about that next year. The only thing that makes it not a perfect movie is that Liv Tyler is not in enough of it. Just yeah, yeah. saying. Just I still like her part, though, even though I do, not too, but action. not in enough of it. He's a perfect her elf. voice, her soothing voice in those scenes that she has with. with she has uh, a suit. I, she's an ASMR person to me at this point. I can watch her. Yeah, do yeah it's a nice little right story. story. I fall asleep with a boner. Imagine that. <laughs> Elvin Wood. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. Please like and subscribe. Check out Captain Vanity on his channel. Link down below. He's amazing. We love having him thank on you. here. Thank you, sir. Okay, you. you are the man. And uh, Brian and Jamie, thank you so much, you guys. Me and John, uh, we got much more coming out you for the rest of the year. But guys. Uh, what's the third movie called? Return of the King <laughs> is coming. Return of the Jedi. That's the one. <laughs> Revenge of the King. Yeah. Coming next year, guys. New Harvest. The Fellowship will continue its journey to the finale. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And we drink your cinema.